The big question you need to ask yourself every day is, do I own a job or do I own a business? And unfortunately, the majority of contractors out there own a job. That's right, they're a slave to their own business. But the other side of the fence is so much greener, it's so much better, and that's when you're finally fully in control of your destiny, your freedom, your time, and that's what Contractor Secrets is about. It's about taking back our time, building a business with systems, standards, values, procedures, putting yourself in the driver's seat, and that's what it's about. So I'm excited. I'm happy to have you here. Let's dive into the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Welcome to the Trade Thrive Podcast. This is Tanner, your host, and today we're going to dive into part two of our three-part series where we discuss building value with specific types of homeowners. Quick recap on our last episode, we discussed building value with people that are selling, people that are investing, people that are renting and flipping their house, and how to approach that. And we kind of discussed approaching it with identifying how efficient we are, how fast we can get the job done, not to be confused with subpar work, but more or less zeroing in on how we can help them achieve their goal, get to the next step of the process as quickly and as conveniently as possible, which separates us from the competition, allows us to price the job uh, with confidence, and of course, uh, allows us to protect our profit with these sorts of homeowners. So let's talk about the next type of homeowner. And this is obviously going to be someone that you're going to encounter very frequently if you specifically work residential. These are people that are living in their house. Now, people that are living in their house, um, they need to be approached with a different level of care, different level of concern, um, much more different than you know someone who's selling, flipping, renting, where in most cases you're probably working in an empty house You know, with people that are living in their house. There's different variables, there's different concerns. So you need to be flexible with how you approach this sort of customer. Now, we break this sort of customer into two different subcategories. So you have people that are living in their house and they need to upkeep their house. And then you have people living in their house and they want to upgrade their house. So you have two different things here. You have need and you have want. So I'm going to give you an example of one. And the first example is uh, someone who got a letter from the HOA committee saying, hey, your house is looking pretty shoddy. I need you to get some quotes and get an estimate to paint this thing or we're going to fine you. (laughs) And this is a lot different than somebody who seeks your services because they're excited to change the look of the house. Okay. So two totally different approaches, right? So you have somebody who's genuinely interested in working with you and is excited about this new adventure of changing the color of their house or upgrading the house in some way. And then you have someone that's forced to, and how do you approach them, right? You can't go in with the same approach or you're going to only be compared with price. So the first thing is, is that let's go with the people who have to upkeep. Let's go with someone who has the HOA letter in hand. They have to reach out. They have to get some estimates, right? By nature, they are going to look for the most affordable option because this isn't something they really wanted to do in the first place. And if it was, they would have done it already. So how do we build value with someone that doesn't even want to work with us? And we do this in a very specific way. The first thing is you have to recognize that you are there, not because they want you there, but most importantly, you're there because you have to be there. But you can really be what I'd like to call like the saving grace in this situation. So the way I approach someone like this is, you know, I do it with a delicate, um, you know, understanding. And I say, you know, essentially when I ask what the story is, so that's always our opening question to figure out what's going on. And they explain, well, we got a letter from the HOA. We need to get the house painted. I'll approach it like this, you know, hey, listen, I know this is probably something you didn't anticipate. And one thing I can say is that if you go with us, you know, we're going to invest in a product that's going to prevent you from having to make this investment again, anytime in the long future. And essentially what that means is we're going to use a product that is guaranteed against fading, peeling, chalking, something that's going to give you at least a 25 year warranty through the manufacturer. And another thing you're going to love about us, if any of this happens within seven years, we're going to put a warranty on it, right? So what we've done now is like, we've literally become the hero in the situation. And instead of just coming in and giving an estimate and only being compared by, you know, price to the other contractor, 
you know, when they're looking at the estimates or they're comparing us to a previous estimate, they're going to say, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. You know, for the difference between what Tanner was and the difference between what the other guy was, Tanner's giving us a seven-year warranty. We won't have to do this for a long time. He's using top-grade paint. He's using the best thing you can put on the outside of my house. This is worth it because I really don't want to deal with this again. And that is exactly how you approach someone like that. It's like literally find a way to be the hero, find the way to help them avoid the pain of having to deal with something like this again. Very big. So the next part of this is someone who wants to upgrade their house. Now you have people that you know, want a new look or they want to just maybe change you know, the carpets to vinyl or maybe they want to just change the color of their house or get their cabinets refinished or whatever it is. But for some reason, they sought your services out because they seen a house they like or they seen an image, a picture. Maybe they watch Joanna Gaines on HGTV like I hear three times a day. Maybe that's what the motivation was. But what it really comes down to is they have a vision and they want you to bring that vision to life. Now, that vision could either be comfort, convenience. It could be the look. Whatever it is, they've sought you because they want this. They don't need it. They don't have an HOA you know, fine on the way. They, they want the service. So how do you build value with someone like this? Well, you need to make it a very, very easy, convenient process to get them from where they are to where they want to be. And you can really use what I love to call identifying the perfect vision, but aiding in the perfect vision as your strategic value highlight. And by that, I mean in my industry, which is painting, and a lot of you guys who follow me are in the painting industry, what we do is we offer a free color consultation to help them pick the right colors. So I'll give you an example of what that dialogue looks like. You know, when you always say, go in, uh, hey, what's the story? What did you invite us over for? You know, oh, well, you know, I was on HGTV and, you know, we were thinking about it and we really just want to change the color of the house, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've heard that before. Trust me. Um, some of you have definitely heard that before, too. And, you know, one thing that you could say is, oh, well, what were you thinking? Well, we were thinking like, you know, something in the grays. Well, if you could give me a list of every gray shade, you'd be listing it on, you know, an Excel spreadsheet with 9 million cells. There's so many colors. So one thing that I like to do is alleviate this overwhelming color selection process and build value at the same time. So what I'll say is, oh, great. That's a great idea. And what you want to do is emphasize like the validity in their vision. I think gray will look great in here. Okay. Whether you like gray or not, say it'll look great because it's not your house. Your opinion doesn't matter <laughs> unless it's like a really crazy color. Then you got to step in and be like, I don't think bright pink would be great for resale. Um, but normally that's not the case. So essentially you want to be like, you know, I think it'll look great. And listen, we know that there's a ton of different shades of gray. One thing that we invest in whenever someone hires us is we present you with a free color consultation with a licensed decorator to paint color samples on the wall to help aid you in this color process. How much more valuable is that than the guy who came over and did an estimate and emailed you a quote and that was it? Much more valuable. Because you know what? He didn't really care too much about what was important to you. He just came over and gave you a price. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that this is a competitive market. And if you want to be different, you need to be different. You need to do things that are different. You need to identify what's important to the people that you're servicing. And when you make that your focus, you know, you're in a you're in a league of your own. So um, maybe you don't have the resources to provide a free color consultation, which to me, it's kind of surprising. I think that you could pay a decorator $100 to go do a free color consultation. I think you can get in contact with Sherwin-Williams. I know they offer color consultations. Or you can be a next-level professional. Um, and this is exactly what I did when I started my painting business is that I went in and did these color consultations myself. I made time for them. I went in, I bought samples, and I painted them on the wall. And I gave my advice, you know, because at that point, my advice was appreciated. I used to sell it. I used to say, hey, I'll come in with samples and we will go over colors together. Now, maybe you're listening to this, you're a flooring contractor or you have, you know, maybe a roofing contractor. Hey, do you think that people are interested in this specific stage about what type of shingle, what color shingle, or maybe the type of flooring, what type of style? There's so many options and you have to identify somebody who is so interested in the vision and you have to build value for that specific person. So if you're listening to this and you maybe haven't been identifying your customers, maybe you haven't been categorizing them, 
now's the time. And on the next time you get a phone call, ask the question, what's the story? And then from there, build value based off of what it is that's most important to them. So part three of this series is uh, working with people who are buying the house to live in. And I'm excited to get into that because they're a very special category in, in themselves. So uh, appreciate you guys listening. If you're a painting contractor, I really encourage you to head over to sellpaintjobs.com. You can download the free calculator. Uh, the free pricing calculator is going to make it easy for you to estimate jobs. So you can spend more time focusing on what's more important. And to me, building value, earning trust, and building a relationship is what's going to sell you the jobs. The pricing um, can be justified with all those things. So check out the free pricing calculator if you have it already. Please take the time to look into the Painting Business Sales Academy. Uh, that is a course designed to help you bring all of these concepts together. And you can find that at sellpaintjobs.com slash PBSA. That's short for Painting Business Sales Academy. Hey, I just want to take a second to thank you for joining me here on the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Um, I'm just going to take this opportunity to let you know that my passion is coaching people, helping people. Um, I've changed my Instagram name to at contractor coach. And I did that because that is my passion. I want to help you. So please reach out to me. If you have an issue going on in your business, send me an email, find me on Instagram, message me, and let's do a breakthrough session. I want to work through your problems in your business to help you get to that next level. And, and one thing that I always say is this, you know, the difference between those that get over the humps and the hurdles in business is just a change in perspective. And that's what I plan to offer you. So get with me, message me, allow me to help you take your business to the next level.